Hi, I'm Phil, and today I'm going to talk about um, the uh, T Watch 2020 uh, version 3. And um, this watch is my second one. Uh, I uh, obtained the, the uh, T Watch about a month ago, and it was defective. And I got a, a refund from my eBay supplier, and I bought. Um, a replacement direct from the uh, manufacturer and uh, we'll navigate through this uh, mind map to uh, see what my experiences are. Everything worked very well, uh, straight out of the box. The uh, demos, although not very exciting, um, do show you some of the potential of the watch. Now this is, a, if you're a, an experienced uh, Arduino um, programmer, uh, that is, you work with the Arduino IDE and work in C++, this is the watch for you. It does have some pluses or minuses. Uh, I'll go through some of my projects and I'll give you an overall critique of the watch later on. Just to uh, summarise what this watch is and uh, what it can do. It's based on the uh, ESP32 processor. And when you combine that with the additional memory and uh, the ESP32's Wi-Fi and Bluetooth capabilities, you've got some very good uh, communications. So one of the strengths of this watch is that it can be used to develop um, IO2 applications, the Internet of Things applications, and it can be a uh, IoT um, terminal. Uh, on your risk. So it can connect you to the uh, Internet of Things via Wi Fi. Okay, so it does all the things I want. It's programmable, it's uh, wearable, but it's a little bit fat, um, and it's not as nice as the other watch that I have. Um, you can network it both to uh, Bluetooth and to Wi Fi, and you can interact, and it um, can work with the um, environment around you. So um, my other watch was the Bangle. And um, this is a, a different watch. In many ways, it's much nicer. And I prefer wearing this watch. This is a much nicer one. And it arrived about um, a couple of days after I got my first T-Watch. But um, this watch has a totally different um, programming environment and um, you need to know JavaScript to get going. The other thing is that uh, it's much easier to develop numerous applications or numerous apps for this watch because it has, um, it's like a operating system where you can add new apps just like you do with your uh, iPhone. And um, there's a, a process for doing that. You don't have to go through a complicated um, environment all the time, like you do with the uh, T-Watch. Uh, so in some ways, this actually gives you a much nicer environment um, to work with. So uh, let's go back to um, the T-Watch. And uh, we'll have a look at some of the projects I've been working with. So as you can see, uh, my first attempt at commissioning failed. And uh, with the replacement, I was able to uh, go on and um, get it going uh, on my second attempt. So this only happened a couple of days ago. And uh, one of the first programs I got going was the uh, microphone program. And um, it gives a display uh, on the watcher's uh, screen, the amplitude of the sound, and um, it works. It's, and this is pretty typical of the programs. Lots of unit tests, they're well documented. And um, if you get this watch, this is the way you have to go about learning um, how to program it. Uh, my second um, program was a step counter. And again, it's a unit test and it's published on the internet. And I've got it now part of my, um, uh, examples in the Arduino IDE environment. So um, this is the result that I got on the watch. 
And you could use this as the basis um, for um, exercise apps on the watch. And it uses an accelerometer. And uh, similarly with the other ones, they all work. Uh, Play MP3, uh, using the watch uh, to link to both the um, uh, my Apple iPad and also on to um, my uh, Android tablet. Uh, the watch is able to um, use its speaker and uh, play, play music. Uh, the other app that's um, worth um, learning and uh, exploring is the uh, touch and motor control. So this will allow you to touch the screen and um, cause the um, watch to vibrate. And of course, uh, it doesn't have GSP, so none of those uh, tests or, uh, will work. Now, <clears throat> there is a, a simple framework published by one of the uh, users, and I recommend you go through this. But it's very, very difficult to set the time on, on um, using that application. But it gives you a bit of an idea of how to um, create an environment with six applications. But they're all in the one uh, program. And uh, you've got to make sure that you can handle a very, very large um, um, program if you want to uh, have numerous apps the way that this one has done it. Time synchronization, both in um, going to a NTP server and also uh, to Bluetooth, both uh, work very, very well. And uh, the one I liked was uh, the Internet of Things um, program. And um, I'll go through that. I'll just go through the objectives, uh, the hardware, and the software of that um, just shortly. But to give you an idea of what uh, it looks like, uh, this is the result on the watch's face. It shows the time uh, and a uh, NTP um, server has been linked uh, to my watch over the internet. So it's showing the, the time and the date in the uh, correct format for me. But in addition to that, on the top, it shows you um, what it publishes, so um, uh, and also um, what it subscribes to. So we'll have a look at that in the minute. Um, so uh, using MQTT publish and subscribe, you can get messages, show those messages on the screen, and get your um, watch to vibrate to alert you. So um, we might have a look at that in a minute. But um, the objectives of that program, we'll just uh, open that up and expand it. So you can see the text a bit clearer. So the uh, first objective is that I wanted the uh, watch to synchronize with my home Wi-Fi. And um, also with the MQTT server, so that it can be connected to my environment around the house. It's also going to synchronize with a um, network um, time protocol. Uh, server, and I'm choosing an Australian one from the CSIRO. Um, the uh, next one, I'm subscribing to the uh, server, and I've um, I've got a, a number of topics: uh, test one, test two, and test three, and I'm interacting with Node Red with um, with that. Uh, on the watch, I want to um, show time and date, and also um, MQ. TT messages. And when I uh, touch the watch, it will vibrate and uh, publish a, a message via MQTT. And uh, my no bread program on my Windows PC will pick that one up. And despite doing all this, I want to make sure that there's no loss of timing on the watch. And uh, we'll have a look at a bit of the software. So um, here's the program in the Arduino IDE. So you can see the, uh, the goal that I've set uh, up here, the libraries that I'm calling, and the objects that I'm setting up. So um, this object here is for the MQTT 
and uh, you have to set it up with your um, password uh, and uh, you have to identify the uh, MQTT server that you want to link to. Okay, so um, when I um, set up the watch, I need to make sure that um, I've got the right messages and I've got the right links to my MQTT server. And this is what this function is doing. On setup, most of this is um, to establish the right environment on the watch, both for the graphics and also for uh, setting up the uh, motor to vibrate. And um, so, uh, and getting ready for the MQTT client. So um, the interesting part all happens in the continuous loop. And uh, here I'm checking if there's any messages uh, on the MQTT. Uh, but also every 20 seconds, I'm sending a message and the message goes out on um, user one slash T watch slash test one. And the message is just simply hello and account. So I'm counting um, that with the variable value and then incrementing that um, every 20 seconds. Uh, the next part, the middle part of the um, uh, forever or the uh, loop, continuous loop, is um, checking to see whether the uh, screen has been touched. And if it has, it sends out a message on the uh, topic. Uh, test three with the message touch. Now, the, the only problem with this is that it um, takes a while to go around here. So you, um, you have to keep your finger on the screen for about a second to make sure that this um, is registered. And finally, without any loss of time, uh, the um, time and date are shown on the uh, watcher's screen. So uh, let's have a look to see how this works on uh, Node Red. So we have a, a Node Red program. So this is on my Windows PC. And if I just clear the screen, you'll see that every 20 seconds or so, uh, we get a message, hello, and an, an updated uh, message uh, on the screen. If I touch the uh, watch, um, I'm just touching the watch now, and this doesn't respond very well, so it um, sometimes works, sometimes it doesn't. But when it does work, it will actually give a message here of touch. Okay. And the, uh, on the bottom, if I want to send a message to the watch from my Windows program, I just simply uh, press that one. Uh, okay, so I can feel the vibration. And the vibration is that um, it sends. So it picks up messages from my Windows PC quite well, although the uh, touch function is not um, working so well. Okay, so we'll return to the mind map. And um, we'll have a look at uh, the overall critique. And uh, we'll just go back and uh, set that on the normal display so we can navigate quickly to the um, critique area. So overall, the projects went quite well. I was quite pleased with um, getting those results. And all that happened within one day, about 20 programs, which is quite nice. So. Um, Looking at the critique, I'll just expand that again so we can uh, see the text. And I'll put that in the middle. Okay, so um, look, not every watch is going to be perfect. And uh, this watch has some good things and some bad things. Uh, I might actually change that so that it um, has the right icon. So it's going to be good. And uh, we'll just get rid of the arrow. Okay, so let's look at the good things. Overall, I like the watch. Um, I, I'd recommend it if you're an a, uh, Arduino IDE uh, programmer. Uh, the display is quite readable, uh, it, although it's very power hungry. So you need to um, minimize your use of the screen if you want it to last more than a couple of days. Uh, it's um, 
easy to use and out of the box you'll get some demonstrations but they're not that exciting and uh, you'll get most of your fun from your own programming so i, I uh, recommend going through the um, examples in the um, ide arduino ide and follow those and you'll uh, get the hang of how this uh, watch can work one nice thing is that you can open the back so while that's good it's not waterproof uh, but it does mean you can easily replace a battery if you ever have a defective battery software development wise um, it works in the esp32 environment and there's plenty of support for that now and not only in the IDE environment there are alternative um, environments um, like uh, python and it's um, quite possible to uh, replace with um, replace the original firmware so that it can support um, environments like um, Espruno and uh, use a similar development environment like the uh, bangle.js. And then you can start programming in uh, JavaScript. So you've got a choice. You can either program, uh, but this takes a bit of work and um, the uh, manufacturer and developer uh, has not set that up yet. But the developer does respond to emails, which is good. Um, uncertain uh, i think there is extra memory so there's no real problem here there is no gps so uh, that one goes and uh, stay tuned and i'll give you a physical demonstration of this watch so here we have um t watch 2020 version 3 and it's got my uh, iot program that, that is the uh, internet of things and it's connected to my um, home Wi-Fi system and my home MQTT server. So um, it um, not only displays time and date on the watch, but um, there's a, um, a couple of small lines on top and uh, you can uh, see that it's um, publishing a hello message, hello number 262 and it publishes that every uh, 20 seconds and that message goes to the uh, home um, MQTT server and um, other programs on the network um, can pick that up just before we have a look at that um, I'll just show you it in comparison to the uh, bangle.js watch so they're uh, using quite different technologies and um, they're quite different in the style. Okay, so uh, my preference in terms of style and my preference to wear every day is the Bangle JS, but um, the um, uh, T-Watch is still a, a very good watch and it's a, a lot of fun to uh, program. Okay, so um, if you go to uh, my Windows PC and we go on No Red, we can uh, see the messages coming in from the watch and these will happen I'll just clear the screen and uh, we'll wait for the next message so there should be another message that um, appears there it's just coming now and um, that message will change the value every uh, 20 seconds uh, so if we want to send a message to the watch we just simply um, press the button on no red and uh, we just go and we can see that the watch now has um, a message sign so I'm going to publish that again uh, so it does clear every uh, every within the 20 second period so um, there we go there's a um, the test 2 message has just been published and if we want to uh, send a message to the MQTT server we just simply um, put my finger on the screen and it will uh, send a message uh, touch to the MQTT. Although this, this doesn't work very well, it's something that I still have to, um, to work on. Um, so it's, it's missed that message, but you can see that additional hello messages are appearing. 